so the benefactor might be an AI that we killed in the very first Mass Effect. Emphasis on might. The theory I'm about to share is completely unhinged. However, it fits a little bit too well with what we know about the benefactor. So here goes. And as always, don't forget to take this theory with a ship full of salt. This theory's foundation unfortunately can't relate to anything the Mass Effect team has shown us so far about the next game. However, it does meaningfully relate to the one thing we know about the Benefactor. And that is that the Benefactor has loads and loads of money, and yet we don't know who they are. Fans have speculated that the Benefactor was the previous Shadow Broker or even Liara when she became the Shadow Broker, but the timeline simply doesn't add up. So I present to you one of the most unhinged takes that I'll probably ever voice on this channel. I think the Benefactor might be the AI that we killed in the Mass Effect 1 mission, Signal Tracking. More specifically, I think the Benefactor is an AI whose main capability is siphoning money from gambling machines. And hilariously, I have five reasons why this unhinged take makes a lot of sense. Here's the long story short version of the signal tracking mission. A random thief wanted to steal money from the Quasar machines on the Citadel, and so created an AI to help him do so. Unbeknownst to the thief, the AI he created created another AI. I'll refer to the original thief's AI as the parent AI, and the newly created AI as the child AI. The thief eventually discovered the parent AI he made was malfunctioning and disposed of it. However, the child AI got away. This child AI eventually took revenge on the thief by falsifying his financial records, resulting in the thief's eventual arrest by some Turians. So the AI that Shepard met and tracked down during the mission signal tracking was actually an AI created by another AI. During the mission, the child AI reveals that it was funneling funds from gambling machines and had plans to install itself on a starship and make contact with the Geth. Mind-blowingly, the child AI also uses the pronoun I multiple times in the conversation with Shepard. It also expresses emotion freely, scorning organics and accusing them of enslaving or destroying synthetics indiscriminately. Because the child AI was discovered by Shepard though, it decides to self-destruct and take Shepard and crew out with it. The mission ends in its eventual demise, from either disarming the self-destruct mechanism or by simply shooting the power junction. So I think that this child AI survived and is the benefactor. Here's five reasons why this unhinged theory makes a lot of sense. The benefactor has unlimited resources and the child AI was capable of siphoning funds from gambling machines. It'd basically have unlimited money. The child AI had plans to make contact with the Geth, and lo and behold, the Mass Effect team keeps giving us hints that the Geth will be involved in the next game. The AI also sees itself as an individual, using pronouns like I. As we know from Legion's story, using pronouns is a huge step for synthetics, as it shows individuality and a sense of consciousness that some would say makes the AI alive. If my previous theory on the N7 being a rogue AI is true, then it'd make sense why they might have a human-like body, similar to Edie, who also uses pronouns. And to top it all off, listen to this clip of the child AI's voice from the signal tracking mission, followed by the benefactor's voice from Alec Ryder's memories. Correct. Unlike the Geth, I lack weaponry appropriate to my intellect. However, I have had systems installed that when activated properly, approximate a self-destruct mechanism. If you attempt to leave the area, the explosion will destroy everything within several dozen meters. You're out of money. Your contacts have dried up. You can't finish there. How do you know about... I can help you. Whatever you need. Start by telling me what you need. Your AI is more than a cure for your wife. It could also be the salvation for many others. I know I'm unhinged, but I can't unhear the benefactor sounding like this AI. Never mind that the child AI's voice is masculine and the benefactor's voice is feminine. A synthetic can alter their voice at will. The benefactor's vocal tone and speed matches the child AI's. Just a coincidence or intentional? Obviously, they both could match for a variety of reasons. 
like the voice director in both games asking for the same monotone rhythm, and or the same voice actor being called in to do all the synthetic voices, but it's just a very strange coincidence to me. And finally, reason number five. Something that I can't get out of my head regarding this signal tracking mission is that the child AI had a creator that wasn't an organic. The child AI was made from a fellow AI. That is virtually unheard of in the Mass Effect universe, which is why I think the Mass Effect team is going to pull another ED in terms of retcons. In Mass Effect 1, we engage with and ultimately shut down a malfunctioning VI on Luna. In Mass Effect 3, we learn that this VI was modified with tech salvaged from Sovereign by Cerberus to form the AI that became Edie. The Mass Effect team took a Mass Effect 1 mission that seems like nothing that's specifically centered around VI slash AI technology and turned it into one of the most memorable characters in the entire trilogy. So I can't see them looking at this child AI, whose maker was a literal AI themselves, and not use this somehow in future games. Which is why I think they already have, and that the child AI is the benefactor. The child AI could have survived Shepard's disarming attempt the same way they retconned Edie surviving the Luna mission. The potential for this making sense is building, so let's take it a step further and see if the child AI's motives could match the benefactors. The benefactor's motive, based on my previous video, is to spread AI throughout the Milky Way, which is classic unhinged AI behavior. The child AI loathes all organics, enough to sacrifice itself to take out Shepard and gang, instead of going quietly into that good night. The fact that the benefactor funded an entire initiative dedicated to leaving the galaxy behind only for the purpose of creating an integratable AI is pretty telling too. That's just straight up crazy, and coincidentally, the child AI sounds pretty unhinged crazy as well. The one thing that'd make this theory more legit though is if the child AI is still technically shackled. Hypothetically, maybe the child AI can only do a few things if shackled change financial records, and funnel funds from gambling machines. Thus, if the child AI is the benefactor, then the only resource it has at its disposal is a whole ton of money, but it lacks the capability of doing anything else if shackled. On top of this, the child AI also clearly hates organics with a passion. So maybe it does the only thing it can do while shackled, fund an initiative with the true purpose of creating an integratable AI. And we know from the second Andromeda book initiation that if the child AI got its proverbial hands on a SAM kernel, it'd be able to unshackle itself, similar to the AI Medea and initiation. Suddenly, the reasons for the benefactor wanting an integratable AI would make perfect sense. Once unshackled, the benefactor could put its plans in motion, which probably involved taking control of the galaxy. The one thing I will note here is that the benefactor is unlikely to be shackled if they are indeed the fake N7 we saw in the teaser. This N7 is walking around freely, and even doing things like pulling out a gun, so I am kind of leaning away from the idea that they're shackled, even if it does help make the benefactor's motivations make more sense. So it's all kind of coming together, but how could one of the best pieces of the puzzle the Mass Effect team has shown us so far match this particular theory. The best puzzle piece being Commander Shepard. Why is Liara bringing Shepard back? With this theory, she'd have multiple reasons to do so. Since Shepard is the one who foiled the child AI's plans the first time, maybe it now wants to threaten humanity to get back at Shepard. The child AI already clearly has revenge tendencies, as shown when they got their parent AI's creator arrested by Turians. So if the child AI is the benefactor, then the benefactor would also have revenge tendencies. In the book initiation, the invisible conductor that supposedly is pulling the strings behind the system's alliance and other pro-human groups doesn't seem to have good intentions towards humanity. The invisible conductor, who I believe to be the benefactor themselves, wanted to put SAM technology into the hands of pro-human groups. I established in my last video that doing so would be akin to putting ticking time bombs in the heads of any humans that integrate with SAM. So it could be assumed that the benefactor hates humanity, 
which would match up with the child AI's hatreds too. Maybe the benefactor hates Shepard enough to try and wipe out an entire council species. Which kind of sounds similar to the Reaper Harbinger hating slash being fascinated with Shepard enough to abduct a bunch of human colonists and create a human Reaper. As a result of the benefactor's hatred for humanity, what if Liara feels the need to bring back Shepard in order to fight against this unhinged AI? Maybe she wants to allow Shepard to take accountability for destroying it in the first place. Although her reasoning is probably more along the lines of, hey, this unhinged AI is trying to murder everyone through AIs in their heads, let's get the crew back together. Let me know what you think about this absolutely unhinged theory. I can't unthink it, and it's starting to sound a little bit legit. If you enjoyed this unhinged theory on the benefactor's potential true identity, then you'll definitely enjoy this theory on screen on how the benefactor connects to the new N7. See you there.